I modeled this box in two different ways, two different approaches, completely on the opposite side, both end up to this packaging. I have done one, I haven't done the other, and I wanna do both. Using sheet metal module, I want to once model this in this folded format like this, measure the dimensions and actually use the sheet metal module. And after I did that, I want to destruct this box, completely open it like this until I get the flat pattern, put it inside my 2D scanner, bring it into SolidWorks and fold it back into a box and see which one works best so let's do the first method first the first method as you can see this is already modeled i'm going to walk you through this right now so i'm going to walk you through how i did this really quick basically i started by measuring one back side and went to the sheet metal and created a sheet metal with a thickness of 0.4 which is the thickness of this paper over here and then i took it from there after that that would be extending this top bit so the back side this is the back side as you can see then we have the first flange which is this bottom face over here we have this top flange which is this one over here we have this extra layer which we have here we have one extra layer. We have this one, this flange over here, this one. Then another edge flange that just comes on top and just sleeps on this and create a three layer product, which happens over here. So I have one, I have another one glued to the back. So this is uh, starting to get shape. Over here, I have added these flaps. I have added these over here, these two. And there is an error because it says it's intersecting with itself. I could not find the intersection basically, but I, I'm going to ignore it and leave it as it is because it's not changing the geometry for me. Then I added the one on top. So we have basically one and two. So this is one and this is on top two. Then I unfold it and this is the flat pattern I get. What I want to test is whether or not the flat pattern that I get at the end is closer to the actual flat pattern I get on the product. Now let's do the other approach. Okay, now it's time to open this without tearing it apart. I just wanna open its glued edges like that. I wanna, I wanna open it from here to get the flat pattern. So from here. All right, basically we have two solid bodies here. One is this one. This is another piece that is just glued here. So keep that in mind. I can just leave it here for scanning this, but this is my flat pattern. Now I wanna get rid of these extra pieces of paper that are sticking out. Now I'll get to put this inside my 2D scanner and bring it into SolidWorks. All right, after turning the white edges into black, I see I covered these edges really good. So it's clear, except for this last edge over here, but I kind of see this border and I see this line, small line. I think I can use this one and this one to see where they kind of merge. I just save this as a JPEG to my computer and bring this to SolidWorks. By the way, this video is sponsored by Judith. <laughs> no, <laughs> I wish it was, it's not. So put it here first and click OK. Before I do this, I needed to measure one thing and that was the dimension. So we have this one, which is 91.43. So we want to keep 91.43 over here. And first go ahead on the same plane. I brought the sketch on, draw a line from the origin 91.43. So I now can go back to editing my sketch. But first, this should be above it inside the design tree. Otherwise, when I edit my sketch, that line will be disappeared. Now I can double click and try to scale my image accordingly. And it's not even straight, so I'm going to have to rotate it probably a few degrees. The angle is minus one. I'll take it. So this edge is now equal to this line, but there is some offset. It's fine. So I'm going to click OK and leave it here and draw a new sketch this time on top of this. So this is the first sketch, maybe more accurately. So whenever I have a curve and I don't have clear edges either, I use uh, trim entities to extend my lines. Then I do this. Then I just basically try to find the radius by applying. Oh, four looks nice. Three is even better. That's that. I can do this. All right. So let's just do one more time or many more times in a speed up way. Over here, I'm just going to go straight down like that. 
Using mouse gesture, I can do this rather quickly, but at the end, I think it depends on the result, if it actually gives me a result that I can work with. All right, I think I got it. Let me just uh, do round edges. Okay, let's see what we got. 0.4. Boom. Now let me just hide that sketch. This gives us this one, right? Now we're not quite done. I need the bend lines too, where I'm going to bend them. Kind of shows, but it'd be better if I just take it from here on a different sketch. Okay, there is one starts from here to all the way here, right? That's one bend line like that. One would be from here to here again. At this point, I wish my sketch was absolutely straight without any angle of rotation, but I want to see how it turns out. So I think there is one bend line here to here. That's it. So these are my bend lines and I can hide the sketch now like this. Every time I'm going to bend this, I'm going to use this as a reference and sketch on top of this again. I think this is the back surface. So we just want to bend these first. Sketch it bend this one. And this is my flats. Let me just draw a new line. Is this the issue? Click OK and bend this one. Yes. Okay. Kind of. Okay. But where are these lines? I think I'm going to have to draw them again. I'm starting to realize that the angle of my drawing makes or breaks this approach. See, it doesn't even do that. I think I'm going to have to go back and hide this sketch altogether and do it from the top. I think these two would be the first. So we're gonna bend them from somewhere from here to here. See, this is not a straight line and that's already bad, but I'm gonna stick to it because that's where the corners are. See if it actually works. So this sketch it bend, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. This wouldn't be the right order, to be honest. I still need to bend the other flaps, but those two are not working. So this is not the right order. Maybe I can move it a little bit further back. If this method works now, I think I should consider this doable and easy. If it doesn't, then I don't know what to do. I think we come to an halt. Okay, it works. It works, so it's doable. So then we first do this one. All right, I want to bend this from here to here and this one here to here. All right, and lastly, oh, okay, so <laughs> the bending line here is way off. I think I have to go with dimensions with this one and with this one. So we have some issue, not that it's not fixable. It just shows that it takes more time to fix this than I thought. I'm moving this line a little bit further from that bend, so from that point, I mean. Okay, it looks a lot cleaner, I have to admit. It looks a lot cleaner. The corners are correct. The total dimension, let me just measure that. What do I get? 100. So it's basically, we're a couple of millimeters off, and that's because of the lines I drew. All right, I'm starting to think that the second method is a cleaner way to do this because if we compare the flat pattern with all these curves and chamfers down here and with the one on the screen, it quite looks similar and identical. I can spend time to fix this, but I think it's time to recap. This is the first method. This is the second method. So I guess there are two ways to do this. Each have their own pros and cons. The con for this one is bringing the sketch as accurately as possible into SolidWorks. If it's slightly tilted, then all your vertical lines are now vertical and it just causes more issues further down the line. So if you want to go with this method, one thing you need to get right is to scale it as accurately as possible in the beginning and make sure your image is absolutely vertical. I think it's even essential to make sure you place this exactly vertical under the scanner. This method gives you a guaranteed flat pattern, but the final bends need more calculation. The first method where I measured the box in a closed folded format gives you a accurate dimension for the final product after the bend but it gives you more measurement and more calculations on the flat pattern to fix the corners take care of the gaps 
So I guess both ways would work if you want to reverse engineer this, even though it's not the right way to do this. Sheet metal is not designed to do this. I have used sheet metal module in SOLIDWORKS in the past. I've covered it in a previous video. You could go and learn how to work with the tools over there if you want to learn it. And even if you want to get an estimate on your component, not for this, this is cardboard, but for an actual sheet metal, there are online tools like the one I used in the previous video that allows you to upload your file and instantly gives you a quotation, the price for manufacturing. I'm going to put the link to this online calculator below this video, or you could just subscribe to my channel. I know this was not the right way to do this, but I did it anyway. I hope you liked it. I'm going to put some useful links below this video for you too. And if you like this video, you're going to love the video on the right. This takes you to my previous video and the video on the left. I'm not sure what I'm going to put there, but you're going to love it too.